Good afternoon, everyone. I am Jasu Singh Bhatti, a wildlife enthusiast. And today, I'm glad that I got this opportunity to share my experience with you all. I was born and brought up in the lap of Mother Nature in Kanra Jungle Lodge, surrounded by the jungles of Central India. And I became hooked on exploring the wilds of India from early on. I was taken on my first jungle safari by my parents and my uncle Amit Sankla when I was three months old. Although I don't remember anything from the safari, but still I count these special wildlife sightings which I had with my mother and father. And I proudly admit that I was a part of it. I don't know what it was, but my parents' stories of my great grandfather, Padma Shri Kala Sankla. who was the first director of Project Tiger and was titled as a Tiger Man of India, had an immense influence on my view on nature. Perhaps it was the combination of being brought up in the jungle and my great-grandfather's stories which got me interested in nature. Ever since, I took immense pleasure in sharing my knowledge with other wildlife and nature enthusiasts. I believe that awareness is the key to create a sense of belonging with nature. So I started taking locals and visitors on jungle walks and safaris, just not to see, but feel being amidst nature. My parents find it amusing that as a four-year-old, I could even remember the scientific names, which would actually surprise the seasoned naturalist, while my mother struggled to give me math lessons. Homeschooling wasn't very easy for her, since there were butterflies, birds, bugs, and other creepy crawly friends everywhere to keep me distracted. There was an entire world of flora and fauna for me to discover, and the numbers were just boring. Wildlife is addictive, and so is watching tigers roaming freely in the wild. Fortunately, I never required any wake-up calls for getting up early on morning safaris, because who would want me seeing a tiger or a herd of gore? or the pack of wild dogs. Safaris played an important role in filling up my diary memories, as on safaris, you will never know what's going to happen next. So today, I'm going to share one of my unforgettable experience with you all. It was the chilling winter mornings of January, and the jungle was still misty. I was out on safari with our guests, and we were engrossed in admiring a gigantic gore munching on bamboo shoots about 10 meters away from our vehicle. And suddenly, our guide pointed that there's a huge male tiger right behind our vehicle. And everyone's eyes shifted from the gore to the majestic Royal Bengal tiger. And to our utter surprise, it was no one other than the world-renowned tiger, Munna, which bears its family name, <laughs> Cat, on its forehead. So to get a better view and click some front pictures, we moved our vehicle ahead of the tiger. Which year is this? Which year? This was... Uh, 2008. 2008. Oh, 2000. Yes. We moved our vehicle a little bit ahead of the tiger, but, but, we, but the tiger seemed to be following us. Then my father explained us the whole matter, that actually our vehicle was part of Munna's hunting strategy, where he would take the guard of our vehicle to plot a kill against the guard. The gore was completely unaware. But as soon as Munna approached, closer from one side of the vehicle, possibly he smelled his presence, since he gave few grunts. It was a breathtaking moment for us. Our eyes were stuck on Munna, and he crouched at almost touching distance from us. Our hearts were beating at much faster pace, and suddenly, like lightning Munna, pouncing upon the gore, knocked him down and caught hold onto the gore's muzzle in his powerful jaws while grabbing his massive head in his paws. The gore's struggle for life was over after a couple of minutes. Before it took its last breath, Munna dragged him to a nearby bush to have a safe and a hearty meal. This was one of my best encounters on a safari and I feel lucky to eyewitness such a rare event and I feel privileged to share my experience with you all. I got to meet great researchers and photographers from all around the world, and I was quite fortunate to accompany them on safaris. 
and as well as learn photographic skills. I got the opportunity to look nature through lenses and capture them at the age of seven. Earlier this year, I got the privilege to be featured in a documentary film called as Tigerland, directed by Ross Kaufman, which was aired at Sundance Film Festival, USA, by Discovery Channel. And it is all about... And it is all about tiger conservation and people like my great-grandfather who worked day and night to save tigers. While living in the jungle, I took great interest in studying and closely observing the components and inhabitants of the forest. I started from flora and fauna, to the lifeless rocks, as I believe that even a rock has its own story. Night walks are one of my favorite adventures where I take my UV torch and look out for scorpions which glow like gems on the ground, along with those mica stones laying around. And the night never seems dark for me, as hundreds and thousands of fireflies they come together and light up the sky. I continued to watch nature and wildlife from my window, but my life changed when I was 10. I went to Jodhpur and a proper school to pursue my career. The tall trees were replaced by concrete buildings. The free-flowing river was replaced by tap water. And the jungle full of biodiversity was replaced by concrete jungle full of species called as the Homo sapiens. <laughs> My morning Google call was replaced by an alarm clock and the chirping of birds were replaced by honking of horns. I still miss those days when I used to swing, uh, when I used to swing on the aerial roots of banded trees and those nights when I used to spend hours and hours gazing at the sky with my mother, looking for planets and stars, hunting for constellations and celestial bodies. But now I'm like a fish out of water grasping for breath, and my only raise of hope is my school vacation. <laughs> Making new friends was another big task for me, as not many share the same interest. Finding like-minded people in the city was as difficult as finding pearl from the ocean. Anything that would fly in the classroom was super scary and to be killed at first sight. This mentality broke my heart, but as I grew up, I was able to make some friends and my mission to create an awareness, responsibilities to conserve and respect nature continued. Whenever I'm back in Ghana, I simply sink in the nature right away, running freely around with my binoculars, watching birds and imitating their calls. I still go on the banks of Banja River, watching the local fishermen catching fishes. I play in the river just to watch fishes and catch them to take their photographs and release them back in the water. The night walk still astonishes me with its amazing nightlife. I've grown up with wonderful people and, st uh, and stories creating memories which I love to share with people like you. So that even if I'm able to inspire one percent of my audience, I will feel that I am able to, I'm, I will feel that I am able to walk on my great grandfather's footsteps for conservation. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. That was really, really nice. My God, that's, that's amazing. Look at the audience. You've touched so many hearts.